Reaper's got a bunch of weird default settings and in this video I'm gonna go through some of the settings I would change if I had to start over. Starting with this out of fades that Reaper creates whenever you split an item. They are super weird, I have honestly never seen any other audio editor do this. Though I understand that this prevents pops and clicks and if I didn't have those fades and they were spaced apart like this, I would get these clicks and pops at the end of items. So in this specific case, I would like to have my auto fades because that's going to prevent the pops and clicks. And as you see, I prefer to do this manually. I feel like being there by default, it just causes more trouble. For example, if I go and split a snare right at the start, I'm going to lose all of that transient right away. So I have to delete that every time I do a split. And if I'm doing a lot of fine splitting, maybe I'm editing drums that just gets really annoying. So yeah, I just much prefer having this off by default. And the way we disable this, we go to preferences and go to item fade defaults. And here you're gonna uncheck all of these boxes that say fade in and fade out. Once you hit apply, now you should be able to split your items without worrying about the auto fades. And whenever you want to do an auto fade, I highly recommend using this action by SWS, which is called set item fades to default length. I have a shortcut to that. So whenever I need an auto fade, I just press that. And it's gonna basically use whatever length that you have in here. So that's very, very useful to have. By the way, hi, I'm Alejandro from Reaper Tips and I release an ebook with a bunch of tips like this and way more to help you set up Reaper 7 exactly the way you want. It's free and you can grab it in the description below. Y también está disponible en español. <laughs> Let's go over some navigation tips now. My favorite way to get around Reaper is using a hand scroll like I'm doing right now. This I'm doing by clicking and dragging with my mouse wheel to go anywhere I want in my Reaper project. I can go up, left, down, anything. It feels so natural to navigate around your project like this. By the way, if you're wondering what theme I'm using, this is the Reaper Tips theme. And yes, I made this theme, very proud of it. Looks so nice. And you can get it in the description below. It's free. Now to set up the hand scrolling is very simple. Just go to preferences, mouse modifiers, and in here go to arrange view, this one right here. And in here, go middle track. Now where it says default action, just select hand scroll, right? And select this one. Once you have that, press OK. And now you should be able to click and drag with your mouse wheel to navigate around your project like this. Now, maybe you're not too into the hand scrolling and you prefer to use your mouse wheel. So the thing is that by default, when you use your mouse wheel in Reaper, it's going to zoom in and out. And not a lot of people like that. And the way to scroll vertically is holding Alt or Option plus Control Command and go up and down like this. And if you want to go horizontally, you would need to hold Shift and then that goes horizontal. But what if you want to actually go vertically with just your mouse wheel? That's a very easy thing to change. You just need to go to the Actions menu and search for View, Scroll, Vertically. So in here, all you need to do is just select Scroll Vertically click on add to set a shortcut and then press special key. Now just move your mouse wheel until the text set and it's gonna say that you know, it's already mapped to this and now you should be able to scroll vertically using your mouse wheel. But now we need a shortcut for zooming in and out and for that we go to the same menu and search for zoom horizontally. We're gonna set a shortcut to this. I recommend setting the previous shortcut which is this one right here and now you should be able to use whatever modifier that you want for zooming in and out. So vertically, your mouse wheel, and then shift to do horizontal scrolling. Speaking of zooming in and out, by default in Reaper, you have to place the edit cursor wherever you want to center your zoom. So for example, if I want to center over here, I have to place the edit cursor and start zooming in and out. Now, I prefer this to follow my mouse cursor instead. I find that it's a lot of steps having to click and then zoom to that position. I would much rather to follow my mouse cursor instead. And to change that, we go to preferences and where it says zoom scroll offset, you can change the horizontal zoom center to follow your mouse cursor. We hit apply and now it's always gonna follow whatever my mouse is. For example, if I have my mouse cursor over here and I start zooming in, this is gonna be the center of my zoom. You can also change the vertical zoom center 
By default, it's set to track at view center. That means that when you zoom by holding control or command mouse wheel, it's going to use the track in the middle to center the zoom. But if we change this to track under mouse, it's going to follow whatever track you have under your mouse. By default, in Reaper, you hear a tiny fade in every time you press play. And it's enough to make you misjudge a kick or a snare or something like that. Let me show you an example. I have four kicks in here. They're all identical. But since I have my playback cursor in here and I'm going to press play. Once again. Notice how the green one doesn't have as much attack as the blue ones even though they are identical samples. But if I move it back just a bit, you will hear that they are all identical. And that's because of the tiny fade in that happens every time you press play. To fix this, we go to preferences, playback, and where it says tiny fade in on playback star, just unselect that and hit apply. And now you shouldn't hear a difference even if your playback head is right at the start of the sample. One thing that is super weird about Reaper is that let's say that you created a media item, you had your four notes in here, and you want to write more stuff to it. So you click and drag, and this starts to happen. It's just going to start looping. And a lot of people find this strange. Um, I mean, it's great if you're doing loop-based music because whatever changes you're making here, it's going to reflect to all of the loops. So pretty awesome for loop-based music. But not a lot of people are doing loop-based music right away. People just want to extend the item most of the times. So it feels very strange to have that by default. And this not only happens to MIDI items, it also happens with audio items and whatever item in Reaper. It's just going to start looping. So for example, if I have a snare in here and start dragging, at one point it's going to snap, and that means that's the end. And then it's going to start repeating. And it's just very difficult sometimes to find the actual end of the item. So one way to disable this is by right clicking, selecting item settings, and deselect loop item source. That way you can keep going and standing the item and it should work like that. But what if you want to disable this globally? You need to go to preferences and then item loop default and just uncheck all of these and now all your future items won't start looping and you can actually extend them like this. And for audio items, you're going to be able to extend them, but you will notice that it will keep extending forever unless you put it right over here where it snaps, which is the actual ending. And that's just another weird thing, but fortunately, it's very easy to fit. You go to preferences and then go to mouse modifiers and then go to Media Item Edge. And here at the bottom, it says Limit Edits to Source Media Contents for Unloop Media Items. So checking this and hitting Apply, you will notice that when you stand an item, it will snap at the end. And that's how it should be by default, honestly. It's a very, very strange default, but yeah, that's a workaround. <laughs> now, here's one thing that bothers me, especially when I'm recording guitars. I usually like to open a blank session and just run a metronome and I like to practice with a metronome. But the thing is, if you start writing stuff to your project and you press play, you will notice that at the end of the project, it's just going to stop. So I usually find that annoying because I want to press play and just have the metronome going forever. So to fix that, we go to preferences and in the playback menu, there's this option that says stop repeat playback at the end of project. Just uncheck that. And now you should be able to press play and it's just gonna keep going forever. And yeah, it's a small inconvenience, but I'm glad it's easy to fix. Here's another thing that bothers me. When you open the MIDI editor and you want to write a note, you have to click and drag to insert a note every time. Click and drag. And if you just click, it's gonna move the playback head and it's gonna deselect all of the notes. I find that it slows me down a lot and sometimes I click by accident and it's gonna move my playback head and that just makes it frustrating. So I prefer to just click to insert a note. And to do that, we go to preferences, mouse modifier, and in contents, MIDI piano roll, go to left click and where it says default action, we can make it to its insert note and just insert. So hit apply. And now you should be able to just simply click to insert a note. And I find this much nicer. And now you may wonder how to unselect notes. I just simply hold shift and just click anywhere on the empty field. 
and it's gonna unselect all of the nodes for me. The net setting has to do with track folders and the way they collapse. And by default, you have three states. First, you have the track at full height, and then you have them small, and then you have them collapse like this with these tiny tracks. And that's the way it works by default. But you can change this. If you go to preferences, go to track control panels, there's four ways that you can adjust this. I'm personally not a fan of these tiny tracks, and I much prefer to have this state as hidden. So this one that it says normal, small, hidden, it's pretty nice. And that's the one I use. So now for my folders, I have these three states, normal, small, and hidden. And this makes my projects look so clean. I really love having this. You can also make it so it's two states instead of three. And that's also very nice. Uh, you can have normal and collapse. So we'll go normal, collapse, normal, collapse, and also normal, hidden. And this one is very nice because it's just two states. And that's it. I hope that was useful. Check out the ebook in the description below. It's got a bunch of tips like this and way more. And also check out this other video, which is about the best settings for the MIDI editor in Reaper 7. I think you will like it as well.